I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to conclude our study in Hebrews chapter 4 today by looking at verses 14 through 16. Keep in mind, this was written to the Hebrew people. And uh, now we're, we're coming out of the verse 13 and the kind of a parenthesis passage that was there. And now we're getting back once again. I shouldn't say getting back to the theme of the book, but uh, there are several parenthetical passages in the book of Hebrews. Now as we come to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, all the way through to chapter 8 and verse 6, we are going to learn that the priesthood of Christ is far superior to the priesthood of Aaron. Now, these things are not as significant maybe to us today, but we need to understand that this book, even by its very title, was written to the Hebrews. And uh, many of them had a, a, a tendency to trust in the Mosaic law. They had a tendency to trust in Judaism and all these things. And the writer of Hebrews writes to them to remind them of the superiority of Jesus Christ compared to all these things. And uh, the overall theme of the book of Hebrews is Christ is better. And it doesn't matter what you put after that. Uh, you know, Christ is better than all, and we're going to see here that Christ is better than Aaron. Aaron's priesthood was only a type of the wonderful priesthood of Jesus Christ. So let's read Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, and then I'll give you a couple of reasons from this these verses why Christ is better than Aaron. So in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. It's interesting to look at the word, the phrases of let us in the book of Hebrews. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Here we are once again. Let us, therefore, come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Christ is, first of all, in verse 14, he is superior to Aaron because he is the one that ascended into the true Holy of Holies. We know that the high priest once a year would enter into the Holy of Holies, but Christ is the one who entered into the true Holy of Holies. He is our great high priest. It says in verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest, notice that is passed into the heavens, not just the Holy of Holies in a tabernacle, but he is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Aaron could never offer a complete sacrifice for sin, but Jesus did. Jesus is better. Aaron could not rise from the dead by his own power, but Jesus did. Aaron could not enter into the true Holy of Holies, but Jesus did. Aaron was not sinless, but Jesus was. And friends, on the basis of sex truth, we are to hold fast our profession. We are to under, we are to re, be reminded of the fact that we belong to him and that we are to rejoice in who the Lord Jesus Christ is, that he is our great high priest, that we are his possession, and he holds us. Come back to John chapter 10. There's several verses I could take you to. But John chapter 10 as we think about us being his possession and he holds us, in verse 27 through 29, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So as a child of God, I am secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not holding on to God. God is holding on to me. I am secure because of him. So Christ is better than Aaron, first of all, because he ascended to the, to the true Holy of Holies. He ascended into heaven. But he is also better than Aaron because according to verse 15, Christ is sympathetic, and he, he, he is a sympathetic and sinless high priest. You know, in order for a high priest to be able to help, he must understand the needs and the problems of the people before he can represent them before God. And the Bible says in verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Notice there that this is a double negative, which, which helps us to understand that this is actually a positive. It is reminding us 
that Christ is touched by the feelings of our infirmities, that he understands what it is that we are going through, that he faced temptation when he was upon this earth as we are going to see in just a moment. And to be a perfect, to do a perfect job as a high priest, he must be sinless. Aaron could not do a perfect job because Aaron was not sinless. But Jesus could go all the way for us. He knew no sin, he did no sin, and in him was no sin. Christ was not tempted in order for him to fall into sin or maybe fall into sin. His temptations were there. You say, why was he tempting? They were there simply to demonstrate uh, that, that he is sinless, to show that he is pure. The Bible says that he was tempted in all points. That means that he was tried, that he was put to the test. But unlike us, sin did not attract him. Actually, sin repelled him. He had no desire toward sin at all. But the good news is this. Because he was tempted, because he was tried, because he was put to the test, he understands who we are. He understands what we're going through and he exactly fix our need. He knows what we need and he is the one who exactly fix that bill. And verse 16 is so encouraging to me because friends, what you and I deserve uh, from God's perspective is we deserve a throne of judgment. Every single person that has ever been born on this earth <coughs> excuse me, deserves the judgment of God. God would be just in judging us. He would be just in sending us to hell. But friends, this verse reminds us, verse 16 tells us that what we have is not a throne of judgment, but it is a throne of grace for the child of God. Now, for those who reject Jesus Christ, God's only way of salvation one day they will stand before God and that throne that they stand before on that day will be a throne of judgment. You can read about that throne of judgment in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. And I urge you today, if you're listening to this and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would acknowledge your sinful condition that you would understand that your sin separates you from God, that there's nothing that you can do to save yourself, and that you would thank God for loving you and doing for you what you cannot do for yourself, and that you would confess your sin, ask God to forgive you, and to cleanse you, and to make you new. But friends, we're invited as the children of God to come to this throne of grace. Oh, oh, but it gets better than that. Not only are we invited to come, but we are invited to come boldly to that throne of grace, understanding that he is our father, that he desires to hear from us, and that if it matters to us, it matters to him, and he invites us to come before that throne of grace to get the help that we need. Ephesians 3.12 says this, In whom, notice, it's not because of me that I have boldness, it's because of Jesus Christ. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Friends, God expects his people to avail themselves of all that he has for them in Christ. Do you understand what that means, dear child of God? That means this, that because of Jesus Christ, and the invitation that we have to come to him, and what he offers to us as the people of God, that no trial is too great that we're not able to face it. No temptation is too strong, but that in Christ we can overcome it. But that Jesus Christ can give us the grace and the mercy that we need when we need it. We don't have to live defeated Christian lives. Friends, we can be more than conquerors through him that loved us. Let me ask you today, as we close, are you enjoying the victory that comes through our Lord Jesus Christ? Victory is not in you. It's not in your flesh, no matter how hard you try. It is in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, I believe it is. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 37, A, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, that loved us. Friends, there's victory for the child of God, but that victory is only found 
in Jesus Christ. Come to him. He is your great high priest and he is there to help you in your time of need. Have a great day.